Oh wow, cool. Watch this. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. The original bell from that reenactment. That is awesome. That is an awesome piece. Isn't that something? Yeah. What a cool sound too. Yeah. Hello world, it's your Uncle Heavy. Today I'm on location in Belfast, New York. This behind me is the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame. Look who's here with me. Toll from the Toll Road has made it to New York. Now Toll has arranged for us to take a private tour with the president of this museum. So it's gonna be really, really cool. You wanna come along. No tickets required today. Let's go see what kind of trouble we can get into. And we might actually box. We might. I doubt it, but. <laughs> Did I say do come along yet? Yes. Go ahead, say it. Do come along. Nailed it. Who's this knocking at my, holy cow, look who it is. The toll road has come to Western New York. Where's the snow? Uh, yeah, we put it away just for you coming oh, here, so. That's special. <laughs> so here we are in Wales, New York, in the middle of kind of nowhere, on a mill road following a truck. This is how every exciting vlog starts. So welcome to Belfast, New York. We got here a little bit early. We're gonna take a walk around this nice little city square or town square, or whatever this square is in the middle of the municipality and check it out. So crossing the main street here, it's uh, not very active. <laughs> not it's really, no. It's really a nice square. You got this nice little monument in the middle and a gazebo and look, they even got a playground. Looking across the street, I'm seeing some, some big knuckles right there. I guess this is where they kept the valuable, valuable stuff. Look at that. Wow. Vault inside the hotel. Yeah, that's so the really important things go in there. Do you suppose there's another vault inside that vault? Kind of thick. <laughs> Just slightly. All right, close it up. We'll see your safe tracking abilities here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a nuclear bomb's not getting through that. <laughs> was uh, an undefeated Greco-Roman wrestler uh, who was so good that when he was all done, he was allowed to uh, name his own predecessor. And uh, so they didn't even have to fight off. Now this is the Hall of Fame room, and this is where he was interviewed by Nellie Bly. Nellie Bly, around the world in 80 days. Nellie Bly, who, who uh, checked herself into an insane asylum and then reported on it. 
came here and interviewed him and said, how did you lose all that weight? And they sat over here in the corner and he pointed over there and said, see that shirt out of wool? Come on, you guys. See that shirt in the wool out, out of wool uh, over there in the corner, sopping wet? I go, yeah. So it's June and July. Muldoon made me wear that while I ran. <laughs> and it made me sweat. And he said, what did you call it? And he said, it makes me sweat. You call it my sweater. It was all illegal, and all I could all I could induct would be dead bare knucklers. So in order to have a meal and everything, yeah. I came up with honorary inductees who brought a positive spotlight to Western New York by way of boxing. And this is Sullivan's boxing room. And when a champion, a current champion, comes in, they always hesitate oh, before they step wow. in the room. Look at that. They would train up here. Yeah. The ring looks small. I mean, it looks, is it like half the size of a? Just a training ring. Just a training ring. They, they, did, they, they, they fought in 24 foot rings. They actually have ropes on it. Cause you, you know, they call it today. Like they're like, oh, he's down on the ropes, you That's know. Right. Now terminology, it was called a ring. ring. The reason it was called a ring to begin with is there were no ropes. And it was a circle of people. Okay. A ring of people was a cir was a was a ring, and when they put this up, it became a squared circle. circle. Okay. All right. Got it. Yeah, I never Got know it. Where that came from. yeah, 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 yeah. This is an original 1880s punching bag. These are the original swing clubs. I'll talk more about them when we get downstairs. Okay. His original chest protector, all here or chest. Um, expand. Oh, oh, I gotta yeah, say yeah, yeah. how that all here. I was like, all here for 130 years. Wow. Like yeah, perfect. And then back like this. Yeah, look at you go. What other muse museum allows you to actually handle? Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God, handle that. <laughs> when Sullivan got loose and had too much to drink, Mrs. Muldoon would not allow him into the house. So. Muldoon walked him out to these barns and into this, what we like to call the cell. And this is, these are the chains where he was chained down so he couldn't get loose. Wow. Here we are in history. The, uh, not only are we in, a, in the place where a bare knuckler trained, but we are in the number one place of the number one fighter, bare knuckle fighter of all time, the great John L. Selwyn. All these things, all these treasures just locked away. And this is the room that Johnny trained in. Wow. And I'm going to give you a bunch of stories here. We've had ESPN here. We've had Rolling Stone Magazine. We've had the History Channel. We've had Disney Tokyo. And that's just a few of them. And every one of them, they have really liked it when I open up this door. Nice. That's very nice. That's a real barn door. Now that I have made, you're in the exact same spot, the exact same stance as Sullivan was in 1889. And that is a bag that I have replaced so people can hit it. Can you it. may hit it. It's a new bag that's made to look old. Uh, I said hit it, not, not, <laughs> not, not pat it. <laughs> it's soft, but it's still like, yeah. you know, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did I knock it off yet? No. I don't think I don't have anything to worry about. I warmed it up for you. I warmed it up for you. Okay, now pull it into your belly and up and down real high. Yeah. Good. This is Good. Almost now, right now, go hold your arms up as far as you possibly can, straight up, and see if you can go up and down. Heck no, it's heavy. Well, <laughs> wasn't anything for Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, what that was, as I told you originally before we moved these, it was right next to a cemetery. That was originally a grave tamper. And Muldoon, Muldoon turned it into a workout, a workout piece. Are they 20 pounders? Yeah. Uh, 15? I'm not sure. I got to weigh them. I think they're close to 20. 
he ran with these. No, yeah, yeah. How many miles? Twenty. Now, how many miles can you run without you, those? I don't think I can. I don't think I could walk across the room. Do you think you could get these out to your car or anything? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd have to pop it. I would break a sweat. <laughs> and he ran twenty miles. Away. Look at the chain he dragged. Whoa. The shot put that he threw, and the picture of that shot put is in that picture over there that I showed you of Sullivan. This was in here. Head guard? Ear, ear oh. protectors. Okay. Okay. Different kinds of weights. Shoes. Wow. What treasures. Uh, behind you is the long table that the entourage would sit at when Sullivan ate. He would, be served, he would be served here. Muldoon made it a regiment. If he had to eat three times a day, he had to change his clothes every single time before he ate. He had to sit down and rest and digest for one hour and a half afterwards. If he dropped a fork or a spoon or whatever, no one picked, someone didn't pick it up, someone else picked it up and set it there. And it was a mental breakdown that we call today military training. Now, Matt, you gotta give Sullivan a lot of credit though. He was the Mike Tyson of his day to bow to that regiment mm -hmm. because yeah. he knew what was happening now right he's been dead all these years and he's still a legend so uh, a ring ring like i showed you earlier these have been featured in many many books um uh, and they are the original rings that sullivan used they were low here and i also had the step stool where he stepped up on but i talked to the guys 15 years ago and they were in their 90s who in 1931 they were instructed by the priest to, to come into this building and raise these rings so the priest could pull his car in. Look at the oh, oil geez. slick. Yeah, you oh, see. yeah. That's one of the very few times anyone was ever in the barns in all these years. The priest used it as a garage. Grab this one, lean forward, then you'll step with your foot. Here, step with your foot, whichever is more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what you were doing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm leaning. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, now, the first one was easy, the second one. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, bingo! <laughs> the second one isn't quite as easy as <laughs> I imagine the third one's going to be even more difficult. <laughs> should I try it? Should I even try the last? You can try, you're here. Right. Yeah! Hey, it turns out he's yeah. left handed. Yeah! <laughs> Well, then, in, in all fairness to Toll, they, they knocked the weight down from <laughs> Yeah, you're only 200 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So both 30 pounds. Yeah. There you go. All right. Woo. All right, now for the twerking with the work. Yeah. Now for one my. Nice. Because you're tall, just stay back. Oh, wow. Oh. I love the smell. It's got that now, antique. Check out. Take, take time just to check out the inlay work. Wow. This is not a barn. No. Look at the, the dip on the top of the yeah. cabinet. These are glass grapes in a gas light. This is the original couch that Sullivan rested on. It was, was taken out to be saved by the historian. They were going to recover it. Thank God they did not recover it. This oh, is, yeah, yeah. This is Muldoon's original chair that he rested in. Wow. Isn't this something? It's beautiful. This is Sullivan in his heyday. What a handsome man. Sure. Sweet stash, too. Yeah. This is his book that he wrote, and I have many of them, and one of them I have signed by him, Muldoon, where he allowed people to believe that he was of a different age than what he said he was. Mm -hmm. and that was because he wanted to look young to promote his physical culture. Look at all the nice finished off work. That's what I meant. Oh, wow. And this was the wrestling match. Got some parallel bars yeah. here. Or a new one. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's our noon whistle. Little town living at noon, we always have a whistle go off so everybody knows what time it is because no one here can read a clock. <laughs> Get a look right. Every single bottle you see was found underneath the building when we moved it. 
we think it might have been a stop in the Underground Railroad because it was down near the water, and this area has got quite a few stops in the Underground Railroad. Sullivan, in this room, see what it says, rubbing loft. They actually called it this room, the rubbing loft. Three standing rub downs a day, whether you wanted them or not. So this is a bonus. This is the Masonic Hall. On one side was called the Eastern Stars, and on the left-hand side was the Masons. And this has been non-functional for many years. A friend of mine bought this building and refurbished it. And it's a perfect setting for the ring from Rocky II. We own it. I acquired it from Hollywood. Refurb had it refurbished by some of the local folks who are applying for their black belts. They had to do a community project, so they refurbished it. I can't wait to show it to you and tell you a little more of the story. So I'm going to show that up here first. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. And there it is. Nice. <laughs> there it is, the original ring from Rocky II. Rewatch, right? Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Here we are, the ground floor of the ring. Wow. Original ropes, original turnbuckles, original everything. Wow. The people who've been in this ring are Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard, Muhammad Ali, and a slew of others. Because when they flew in, they would work out here and then go down and have their hot dogs. <laughs> the producers came through. They wanted a hot dog. He told them about it. They went upstairs. They saw the ring. They loved it. The only thing they did was that he had an original blue canvas on it. They changed it for the movie to a red canvas. That's it. They never moved it. They shot the whole scene right there. Here it, here it stands. And I'd like to offer it to you guys to get up in it. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. So you walk right down there and the original. Other steps. There. Okay. We're actually going to be able to go up into the ring here. And this is regulation height when they, when they box. Go over the top. Or like go over the top. Nah, no, I don't think so. Between two, that's perfect. And here we are. And the challenger stepping in the ring. Challenger. <laughs> well, hey. It's the ring champion. <laughs> so this is what it looks like from up top so of the ring. Are you gonna be grabbing a jump rope, Toll? Yeah. Start skipping a rope, and I'll do I'll do the lean back part, <laughs> and you could do the easy part of jumping the rope. Yeah, there we go. If I had uh, a jump rope, I'd do it. <laughs> I'm in the same ring that Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard have practiced and trained in. Haven't said it since Hawaii, but life is good. I can imagine myself as many things in this world. A boxer is definitely not one of them, but it's still cool to pretend. The round was like 15 seconds long and I'm already sitting down on the stool. Look at how beautiful these stained glass windows are. And there he is, Creed. So I got this pretty cool coin as a souvenir from that Hall of Fame. It's, it's nice, it's kind of heavy, and it's sealed in this plastic, so very cool. So on recommendation, we're gonna check out this little restaurant called Aces across the street. And maybe, just maybe, we're gonna get a big bite. We'll see. So this is lunch. I mean, I just got a, a bacon and cheese omelet. And what is this, a tuna melt? Tuna melt, yeah. Are we gonna do a really silent big bite? Big bite. So, big bite. <laughs> I didn't think he'd do it. <laughs> so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it because this is, this is definitely one of the cooler places I've been. So, be sure to stay tuned. I have more adventures coming up. Till next time, signing off from Belfast, New York. Bye bye.